So a lot of people have been asking me to do another limited budget food challenge and challenge is the right word there because we're in the tail end of 2020, we're in the middle of a pandemic and there are restrictions on how you can shop. And I really don't think it would be appropriate for me to be blundering around a supermarket in my usual way, trying to penny pinch the best value I can out of my one pound, getting in everybody else's way back and forth through the supermarket. Not a great idea. However, we are going to do a limited budget food challenge today because I need to go and do my regular fortnightly shop, which is going to be a big shop. I'm going to take an extra pound with me and I'm going to buy a pound's worth of ingredients to try to make a large Christmas pudding. Now this is going to be tricky because there's quite a lot of things normally go into a Christmas pudding and a pound is not normally enough to make one. Now I could just go and buy a Christmas pudding for a pound. Probably if I shopped around I could find somewhere selling a Christmas pudding for a pound. It would probably be about the size of a tennis ball and probably wouldn't be very nice. So we're going to try to make something that's big, family size, and hopefully tastes really luxurious out of our one pound budget. As always, there will be some parameters and rules. Let's set those now. So on the forbidden side, it's going to be the usual stuff. Nothing illegal or inappropriate. I'm also going to forbid condiment foraging because, again, wandering around restaurants while people are trying to socially distance having their lunch. It's just a stupid idea, so we're not going to do that. So no condiment foraging this time. Regular foraging I think we will permit. And the usual things we will also permit, which is transport, cooking facilities, kitchen equipment, cold water. And since it's the season of goodwill, I'm going to ask you to allow me one Nutella glass full of ingredients from my own store cupboard. Nothing exotic, but I suspect our shopping is probably going to be deficient in some way today. So up to one glass full of ingredients from my cupboard. Now that might be a lemon and some raisins. It might be some flour and butter or something like that, but it's going to be the sort of stuff that most people probably have in their cupboards. So with that said, let's go shopping. So actually shopping, I couldn't use the camera very much, but I've got a few little clips from the shopping trip. So, this was the real bonus item. So I've got a Warburton's fruit loaf with cinnamon and raisin. So that's really good. That was 34 pence. I've got a tin of mandarin pieces in syrup. That was 35 pence. I've got a carrot, that was five pence. And a banana, that was nine pence. And an orange, which was 15 pence. And that is all I managed to get for my budget. So I think actually that came to 98 pence, so I've got two pence spare in my budget. If I can find something for two pence, I can add that as an embellishment. I think that's probably quite unlikely, but we came in under budget anyway. Okay, so I got three apples that I got from the tree outside the doctor's surgery. And I'm gonna give these a good wash. This That one's got a bit of a bruise on it, but they'll be fine. Just need to get all of the soil and 
stuff off them. Give them a good wash. Oh, that one's had a bit of a bruise as well. So we are going to have to handle these. We're going to have to prepare these pretty quickly before they spoil completely. I'm going to peel them anyway, so it won't matter too much if they're a little bit damaged and scurfy on the outside. Now a lot of people would tell me I should be using the peel, but this has been these are apples that have been sat on the soil for a month or two, and the peel will have acquired an earthy flavour that's not all that pleasant. So we're going to discard that. and just use the nice, decent inner flesh of the apple. Cut out any bits that look a little bit iffy. Now I'm expecting that these apples will be quite sour because this is, this is just an ornamental tree that's probably been planted for its flower rather than its fruit, but less of a taste. Actually, that's not bad. That's quite, it's tart, but not as desperately sour as a crab apple, for example. So normally when I prepare apples, I would be saying, I would be telling you that I'm gonna sprinkle them with lemon juice to stop them going brown. I'm actually gonna do the opposite of that this time. I'm deliberately not going to sprinkle them with lemon juice, partly because I don't have a lemon in my budget, but also because I want them to go brown. So I'm actually going to chop these into small pieces and leave them exposed to the air to allow them to go brown. And it won't make very much difference to the taste. It will sweeten and mellow them a little bit, but it will add a sort of caramelized brown color to our Christmas pudding, which is what I need because there is a shortage of, well, there isn't much dried fruit. There's only what, the only dried fruit we've got is what's in the, uh, in that raisin bread. So we've got to find something else to give us that dark dried fruit color. And it is just an aesthetic thing. It doesn't actually make much, very much difference to the taste at all. Now, it'll be just my luck if these don't actually turn brown because it's quite an acidic apple, so it might have enough citric acid of its own to not go brown, but we'll see. So I'll spread that out on a plate and then we'll leave that open to the air for the afternoon. I know this is going to sound stupid, but these apples smell really apple-y. They've got a really strong apple aroma, is what I'm saying. And that's good. That will give us lots of nice fruity flavour. Okay, well this apple doesn't seem to want to go brown, so I'm going to try dry frying it over a gentle heat. And maybe we can get this to caramelise a little bit actually. That will give us some extra flavours. So we do have to reduce this fruit loaf to crumbs. And I could just do this by tearing it. That's how people used to do it. By just tearing it into small pieces like this. But I have the food processor here and I'm allowed to use it, so that's what we're going to do there. Just kind of coarse crumbs, like so, and we'll get that into our bowl. What I think I might just do is pick the raisins out of here before I put the bread into the blender. Now, it's a bit messy doing this, but I think it's probably worth doing it for the whole pieces of fruit, which will hopefully enhance the effect. Okay, and I've 
made that into finer crumbs than the other one because for one thing we took the fruit out but also that will help it to stick together. The carrot I'm just going to wash thoroughly and then grate directly into the bowl. The apple which we've been frying has definitely caramelized a little bit it's cooked down to a mush but it has caramelized so we'll get that in there. And then this orange, I'm going to have every little bit of the zest of this orange because that's just lots and lots of flavour. I don't want to waste a single bit of that, so we'll have the zest in there separately. And I am going to try to cook down the peel as well. So hopefully we're going to use nearly the whole of this orange, apart from maybe pips if there are any. And the banana, and I'm just going to peel that. I could just mash it up. I'm, I'm kind of tempted to mash it up, but I want to try and create some textures in here. Okay, so that's the banana, and hopefully that will give it some binding in place of normally would have an egg in here but we haven't got any eggs in this recipe or in this experiment rather so hopefully that will replace that so i haven't got a sauce for my pudding so i'm going to save the syrup from these mandarin pieces and mix that with some of the orange juice and make a kind of orange syrup to pour over the top because we haven't got any custard we haven't got any brandy sauce or anything like that we're not going to get that for this budget but we can have a little orange syrup or something to go over there So we will drain that off and set it aside. Okay, that's good. And then these mandarin segments, well, mandarin pieces are going to go in there as well. So it's going to be quite an orangey Christmas pudding. But I don't think that's a bad thing. So I'm just going to stir that up. There's almost no fat in this apart from whatever was in the bread and there's no egg, no dairy, no butter. So it's not going to be as rich as a traditional Christmas pudding might, but I think it might still be okay. So time for my store cupboard ingredients and that's going to be about that much wholemeal flour just happen to have dark brown sugar so white sugar could be used but it would obviously miss out on a tiny bit of taste so I've got dark brown sugar I'm sure you'll let me know if you think that's cheating and then I've got some ground mixed spice here which is a mixture of nutmeg cinnamon cloves allspice probably something like that Pudding spice is what that's often called. That's my free ingredients from the cupboard with a tiny little bit of space at the top so I haven't used my full allowance. And we'll just mix that in. And I want to mix these dry ingredients first and then we'll add a little bit of liquid. We'll just add some water. We've got a bit of cinnamon from the cinnamon bread anyway so if I wanted to I could have made this without the spices but I just think I think most people have got some sort of spices in their cupboards so I feel like that's fair enough to take that actually it's quite moist already so we're not going to need an awful lot more liquid I don't think but there we go so I'm just now going to add a little splash of water to bring that together Good. I'm going to let that sit for a bit just to let the water take up into the flour while we extract the juice from this orange because I have a plan here. So I'm going to try and squeeze the juice out of this orange, which is not easy now that I've zested the skin.
Okay, well, that's as good as we can get. So that juice is going to go into the syrup. There. I'm making a bit of a mess here because you can't easily zest an orange and then juice it. But if you juice it, you can't then zest it. So it is a bit of a compromise. Okay, so that's going to be our syrup for pouring over the thing. I might reduce that down a little bit first. All of these bits of orange here are not going to go to waste. So these bits of orange peel, minus the stalk and blossom scar. I'm going to be cooking this a long time actually, so I'm just going to shred those up really, really fine. That orange peel. Like that. And that's going to go into the the mix. And that might seem like an awful idea, but like I say, it's going to steam for several hours. So I'm hoping we'll get away with that. So that lot will also go into the mix. So that really the whole orange has gone in there. The only reason for separating it into pieces was just to be able to process the juice separately and obviously make sure we didn't get any pips in there as well. There weren't any seeds in that orange as it happens. Well, it smells the part and it feels moist enough now. So I'm not gonna add any more moisture, any more liquid. So now I've got to find a pudding bowl to put that in and then we'll cover it and steam it. Oh, I almost forgot, we've got one more apple. So I'm gonna chop this into small pieces and put them in holes so that there's a, there are pieces of apple as well as the pulp. Okay, and that's the apple pieces as well. The rest of the apple wasn't much good, so I'll just mix those through. I reckon this looks about the right size. Now, normally we would butter that and flour it, but of course we don't have those ingredients, so just gonna have to hope for the best, really. I picked the right size, that's good. And we'll just press that down firmly all around the edges to make sure there's no air gaps or anything in there. And there's not really any alternative but to cover it with grease proof and foil. We'll tie it round and then we'll give that a good steam for a couple of hours. Okay, and then we'll just tie that tight. So I'm just gonna plonk that in a pan of water. The water is about halfway up that bowl and I will need to keep an eye on that to make sure it doesn't boil dry. I'm gonna bring that to the boil and simmer it for three hours. Okay, so that's had two and a half hours and the top is bulging so that means it's baked all the way through hopefully just going to prise that out i should have made a little string handle and i didn't but never mind we'll find a way to get that out in one piece gonna take that out and we'll just unwrap it and see what it looks like Okay, well, let's have a look, the moment of truth. Well, I think we've got something that has, it's come together into a pudding. So before it cools down too much, I'm just gonna run a knife around there and get that turned out onto a plate. Okay, well. So here goes. I'm not sure it's actually going to come out of the dish. It's a bit too. <laughs> okay, it doesn't want to release from the dish, and that's because we didn't butter the dish. But we didn't butter the dish because we don't have butter in our budget. Well, 
not exactly one piece. That's a shame. Right, well, let's see if we can bodge that back together. There we go, can't see the join. Now, part of the reason that hasn't come together is because there isn't enough flour and eggs in there, so we haven't really baked anything here. We've just warmed everything and steamed it through. But, you know, it could be worse. And chef's privilege, I get a little sneaky preview. It's really orangey, but that's nice. It's quite tangy. Probably not quite sweet enough, but we didn't have enough sugar. Even with that cup of sugar that, well, half a cup of sugar that I put in there, it's still a bit undersweet. But we've got that syrup to put on there, so it might be all right. Okay, so there is our low budget Christmas pudding. And actually, I don't think that's too bad. Really, considering that's made from a pound, plus a few extra ingredients, I think that's about the best we could probably have hoped for, really. However, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So, let's cut a piece of this. It doesn't cut all that well. It's a little bit squishy, but that's kind of to be expected, given the compromises we had to make with the ingredients. And it looks all right. So all we've actually got to pour on there is this orange juice and orange syrup, which I've already added. Let's give it a little taste. Well, let's have a sniff first. Well, it smells like Christmas pudding. And the proof of the pudding. Mmm. Very soft incredibly orangey having the whole peel of the orange in there including all the zest and the whole peel and the pulp has made this an incredibly orangey pudding it's more like an orange pudding than a christmas pudding i reckon it probably could have done with another hour of steaming because those carrot shreds are still recognizable they haven't cooked down completely soft but it could do with being sweeter and of course it would be nicer with something creamy, but it's not bad. Okay, so the challenge is finished. It's the next day and I've just warmed up a couple of pieces here and I'm gonna get Jenny to taste it. And we're outside of the parameters of the challenge now anyway, but I wanna find out, is this anything like a Christmas pudding and is it any good? So I'm gonna get Jenny to taste it. Jenny's my guinea pig. I'm gonna have a bit as well. And because we are outside of the parameters of the challenge, I've got some custard we can serve with it. So. Okay, dig in and let me know what you think. It's gonna be really hot, by the way. Mm. So firstly, is it anything like Christmas pudding? Yeah, I would say. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so a bit more orangey, maybe. Yeah, but... it's very orangey. But... I, su I suspect you're going to come across one of the chunks of peel in a minute. I think you're probably not going to like that. But let me know. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's I, all right. I think it's softer than a Christmas yeah, pudding. Softer, yeah. Well, it's not so rich. Yes, it's not as dark and rich. It's no. obviously there's a limit. There's a very small amount of dried fruit in here. Actually, um, most of the fruit that went in there was either fresh or tinned. So yeah, there's a, a only a handful of raisins really in the whole mm. thing. So insofar as the as the challenge was to make a Christmas pudding, it wasn't to make a Christmas pudding with all the things you serve with it. Is it a success? Yeah, I would say for a quid. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's all right. Okay, well there we go. So uh, that was Christmas pudding on a pound. I think that's been a success. So let me know in the comments what you think or what you might have done differently. I hope that's been enjoyable to watch. Merry Christmas from both of us. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.